Cat, it's Maximus here. Might as well do a little review of this Black & Decker DR260. This happens to be a Type 2. So, it's been revised at some point. This is also a 2018 model, but they're still relatively current. I think they have the newest one. It has like some kind of black overmolding over the top. But this is Black & Decker made their name making cheap home utility grade drills way back in the 1930s is when they had really started to dominate the market in cheap <laughs> electric tools. Over the years, they've had many top-notch professional grade tools, but really their bread and butter was home utility grade tools. And so a lot of people who watch this channel uh, would be familiar with the 1980s and early 90s actually late 70s, 80s, early 90s, Black & Decker basic drills. Some of them came in black, green, tan. I even did a video about one that had the metal gearbox. So this is kind of the evolution of that drill. And to tell you the truth, it is quite a bit improved. What we have here is a 5.5 amp motor at 1500 RPM, 3 8 drill. Actually, that's more than enough power. Mostly sleeve bearings. I suspect we might find a ball bearing somewhere in here when we take it apart. We know it's sleeve bearings because the truck spindle actually slides in and out. But they are uh, made to pretty tight tolerances because there is no uh, lateral play. The spindle is actually pretty darn tight in this. And so I will give them credit for that. Pretty lightweight. Not a fan of the mid-grip. On cordless tools, they do mid-grips because they're just so heavy that if they were a traditional pistol grip, you'd be spending a lot of energy trying to keep them straight. On quarter drills, though... I'm not a fan of that. This drill is already pretty light. The reason I'm not a fan of it on quarter drills is, of course, it offsets your hand pretty low compared to the spindle. So when you're drilling, when you put pressure, it tends to want to go downwards like this or go off angle. And when you have a pistol grip drill, your grip is up higher on the drill motor, so it's easier to actually press absolutely straight up and down. This is a unit where if you're drilling metal, you're going to want to have to Put your hand on the back of it to actually get pre pressure to go straight down. It's one of the advantages of D-handle drills is because your hand is literally right in line with the spindle. So when you are drilling, it's really easy and kind of uh, a natural motion to actually drill straight. So I'm not super fan of the midship grill or grip, excuse me, has the world's largest reverse switch. Never seen one this large or that moves this far. I mean, that's almost an inch of movement. Other than that, they do include a trigger lock. Actually, a pretty linear variable speed on this. I don't know if you can't hear me, but there's actually a lot of airflow. And so 1,500, five and a half amps, this will actually do pretty much everything a homeowner would really need to do with a 3H drill. And for the average price, about 35 bucks, I think it's actually okay. I'm not going to criticize it as heavily as you might think because for uh, it's better than what you'd find at Harbor Freight for the $30 range, I can tell you that. It actually has quite a bit of... actually is quite stout. The chuck is going to be one of the weakest things here. And I'm going to do a demonstration. I have an installer's bit. This is a three-quarter inch bit. The reason it's called an installer's bit, it's only for soft materials. And they're cheap for a long drill bit and they're called installers bits because if you want to install cable TV or security camera system wires that type of stuff uh, you use one of these bits they have a little hole in them you can tie you after you drill your hole you can tie a piece of wire <laughs> to this to whatever you know Ethernet cable or whatever you're pulling through and then pull the wire back through the hole but with the round shank and having quite a bit of uh, surface area up here they're notorious for slipping they're exactly the type of thing you might use a drill like this for. It also dem it will demonstrate how bad one of these trucks is. Uh, but we'll see. The problem with these type of uh, hand-tightened trucks is you just can't get enough pressure on them to prevent these types of bits from wanting to slip. But besides that, I think this drill isn't bad, especially for having a spindle that's at least tight side to side. It's going to do most of what people need to do. Once again, it's pretty lightweight. They kind of like shrunk it down and made it really compact. So you have the big motor body and then you have your double reduction gear set. They made it offset. So it's actually pretty comfortable to hold in your hand like this. Overall, not too bad. 
did want to mention the world's worst home improvement store, Lowe's, sells them for... This is the most confusing thing. Lowe's is just... Oh, I guess you save 5% if you use your Advantage card, but 35 bucks at Lowe's. And look at that. The charger's even included on my quarter drill. I'm really happy about that. Alright, so I got this as tight as I can possibly get it by hand. The only way you're getting this tighter is by using some channel locks. We'll see uh, how quickly the bit starts spinning in this. Man. The worst part about cheap drills is they're cheap chucks. Just for giggles to show a good chuck, we got a Magnum hole shooter here with uh, one of the impact chucks. This is actually one of the harder to find hole shooters. Whoop, got that open too much. Milwaukee charged quite a bit for the version that had this impact chuck. That's going to be pretty tight. Let's see how this does. That's how a drill chuck is supposed to hold. I know there's a vast difference between a Milwaukee hole shooter with an impact chuck <laughs> and this Black & Decker, but it's just one of my biggest pet peeves is drill chucks. It's why I like keyed heavy duty Jacobs chucks because you can actually put plenty of force on them. So let's get these screws out, take a look inside. All right, let's get a little bit uh, of zoom in here. We'll say, the screws are all the same size. They are using nine screws, so it's held together pretty well. But they're kind of shallow thread. These aren't the greatest screws. They're not plastite. A plastite screw would be something like this, where you have these extra threads that are just super tall, extra deep for extra grip in plastic. One of the ways they're making it cheaper. But still, for 35 bucks, I mean, it does have a pretty heavy cord, decent strain relief. I mean, once again, I'm not going to criticize them too much because I think they actually did a pretty decent job for the price point. And this thing, this housing is actually, has a pretty tight fit. Come on now. On most tools and equipment, 95% of it or more, the half, the they're actually designed where the case half the side that you pull the screws out from is the side of the case that you want to remove on the clamshell. Not 100%, but like I said, almost 100%. A lot of times people will pull out screws, flip the tool over, and then like a bunch of the stuff won't, uh, will kind of get stuck in an awkward position. And that's really because there is a specific way to remove the case. There's our little spring detent for the switch. I didn't even feel that. Here's another way that they've cheapened out the casing is PP so polypropylene glass fiber reinforced instead of say nylon or polycarbonate so they are saving some money there and I suspected we would find at least one ball bearing and we actually do right here at the back of the motor where it really means quite a bit you get a lot of the carbon particles from the brushes those end up clogging up sleeve bearings and really kind of punish them since this one is just shielded, but since it's in this whole kind of plastic guarded area, and I think it's actually just shielded on the front side, so particles can still get in there, but it's at least nice to see a ball bearing. I believe that will be the only ball bearing, we'll, rolling bearing we'll find in this. And I actually may be incorrect. It looks like there may be a needle bearing on the front end of the boater. All power tools made in like the last 10, 15 years have the asset tag integrated into the tool itself. Pinch type retention for the wires, but at least you can replace the power cord pretty easily. It is not in an integrated some tools. Actually, old the old black and deckers, the strain relief was over molded to the power cord. So it was very difficult to replace the power cord because it relied on the strain over molded strain relief to retain the cord. This is a more standard design. The cord wears out, you pull out the old one, put in another one, the case halves or what, pinch it. Straight cut gears. Here's our centered bearing blocks, I should say. 
there is something they could have put a washer up here just to you know so this doesn't move quite so much they do have a little felt here and that's just to help prevent uh reduce the amount of particles that would get right into here since it is a sleeve bearing any particles that get in there are just going to run around they have no place to escape so at least they did that and i'm suspecting there's actually let me pop this out it's all kind of a funky integrated unit here which is and actually I'm noticing this whole reverse mechanism makes a bit more sense this drill actually has full power and forward and reverse it has a rotating brush card or brush card excuse me which is actually super duper surprising uh really surprising one it does make the trigger switch a much cheaper because it doesn't have a reverse mechanism this is just a essentially a forward only trigger and what this switch does is it relies on the case halves and when you reverse it it's physically moving the brushes from one side to the other you can see that there and mo electric motors have timing like car engines and most almost all tools i mean there's some exceptions Bosch roto hammers the newer ones are one of those exceptions where they have a ro rotating brush card is the fact that two things need to happen the wiring i mean it comes in you know basically the power comes in goes through one brush goes through one set of section of the field the second section of the field and then back out through the second brush and so you actually have to reverse the relationship of the brushes to the field in order to get them to reverse but you actually lose about 30 percent of your power that milwaukee i just showed actually is 30 percent less power in reverse than it is forward but when you have a rotating brush card what happens is one there's a set of contacts in here so as it moves back and forth it's switching the polar quote unquote the polarity but the second thing it's doing is physically moving the brushes so that their quote unquote advance or timing is now optimized for reverse operation and actually yeah, that sets us apart it's actually pretty surprising uh and now if i can Wow, these bearing blocks are actually in there real tight. Super tight, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah, I am definitely surprised at how tight these bearing blocks are. Nothing that uh, this old proto screwdriver can't handle. So they pry out this side too. Because I do want to show that there is Oop, there goes our gear. I do want to figure out what they're using for thrust. We can see since there's grease on this surface, there's probably a ball bearing down in this bore here that the tip of the shaft is pressing against, and that's acting as the thrust bearing. The grease is obviously a very light amount and just a standard grease. It isn't dark. It doesn't have molybdenum or anything in there. But something that is really <laughs> kind of blows me away is if we look, there actually is a needle bearing for the other end of the motor. And so when it comes to sleeve bearings uh, on how, like the high speed motor, that's, that's where it's going to make the most difference to replace them with ball because that's where the friction of a sleeve bearing is going to make the biggest difference. But what's also kind of surprising is if we can just get the oh, the right angle, but I can't, so I have a light. If you look, that is actually a tiny little needle bearing right there, too. Really <laughs> kind of surprised. So the reduction gear on the thrust, the motor thrust side is also a needle bearing. That means that half the bearings in this super cheap Black & Decker drill are actually rolling bearings, which is <laughs> blows me away. The other side, we can see that this is not. So this side of this gear is a just using this bushing here, as well as both sides of the chuck or the chuck spindle, output spindle. That's actually kind of dramatic, to tell you the truth, because... Uh, the old Black & Deckers only had one ball bearing, and that was as a thrust bearing. But on this, I'm just kind of flabbergasted that 
Black & Decker has decided to actually include needle bearings on this side and a ball bearing at the back of the motor. I mean, that's, that makes quite a bit of a difference. And I mean, that's a huge upgrade over the older units. Went ahead and put a judicial amount of grease in there. There's still going to be plenty of airspace because of the other half of the case. And if you've seen any of my Milwaukee drill teardowns, you'll know that what they had in there was a tiny amount of grease and you could put a huge amount of grease. I've I've done so many Milwaukee tool teardowns and you look at them and Milwaukee just... <laughs> it's not shy about the grease. That's for sure. One of the things that helps them last. And I think the last thing, I f before I forget to uh, mention it, really easy brass brush guides, steel clock springs. They don't have little wires, but for five and a half amps, that's okay. Really easy to replace because it's just a little brush. You just take and flip this up, move it off to the side, and the brush just falls out, and you can put a new one in. There's a cutout there, so when the brush gets too short, the spring will stop moving, and so it's automatic stop brushes. So if it stops working and it's, you know, you know, and you made sure that the wire is okay, it's probably just the brushes. You can just pop them, pop out the old nubs and put in some new ones. Brushes have standard sizing, so you can just find replacement ones at any kind of hard, or I should say, tool repair shop. So there's my review and teardown. And to tell you the truth, for $35, it's probably one of the best drills you can get on the market for $35. It actually blows me away. I mean, they cheaped out by using a little bit cheaper screws, but they put in nine of them. They're using a polypropylene body, but it is fiberglass reinforced, so it ought to hold up okay. Just not as expensive as, say, nylon or polycarbonate once again. And then <laughs> some of the other things, you know, you would expect some good design. I mean, Black & Decker's been making drills for a century, so they are masters at this. But, I mean, it is surprising. This absolutely <laughs> shames their old drills. Five and a half amps at 1500 RPM. Huge amount of airflow out of the fan. Uh, half of the uh, surfaces are actually ball, ball bearing and needle bearing. So th two needle bearings, one ball bearing, and then three sleeve bearings. So it's half rolling bearings, which is really surprising. And then the biggest deal is actually having this rotating brush card in there. Full power and forward and reverse. It actually makes it one of the rare corded tools, corded drills on the market from anybody that has a rotating brush card. And it's so weird. You know, Black & Decker is DeWalt, and there are no DeWalt corded drills that have rotating brush cards, as far as I know. Maybe some of the rotary hammers, but I don't think so. Yet, this cheap <laughs> home utility grade Black & Decker actually has a rotating brush card and delivers full power in forward and reverse. And now that I greased up the gears, they do sound a bit better. So all I can say is I actually can recommend it. For 35 bucks, I mean, this will shame whatever Harbor Freight has. I don't even know if Harbor Freight has a $35 drill. Just checked. Harbor Freight actually does have some pretty <laughs> cheap. They do have a $35 uh, ball needle bearing half inch drill. But it doesn't have rotating brush card. It does not deliver full power in forward and reverse. So anyway, as far as a 3 8 drill, I don't think anybody who's, you know, what may watch my channel and just be looking for just a basic low-cost drill, I think this thing would be hard to beat. And I've seen this thing as cheap as 20 bucks, uh, 25 bucks shipped off of eBay. The DR260 is actually, surprisingly enough, a worthy homeowner's grade drill anyway you know except for the chuck which can be replaced with something nicer anyway i really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do until next time caddis maximus out